Today's topic is called focus. We all go through difficult trials in life, but how do we look at the trials? Do you ever worry to the point of sickness when it comes to finances and family problems? Do you ever feel like you're being sucked into a vacuum and you are stuck in the hose right there in the middle? I've gone through my share of trials in life and oftentimes I let my trials overwhelm me. I started thinking, am I losing focus? Am I approaching these trials in the way God would want me to? The answer is no. I am letting my problems overtake me. I need to reclaim victory rather than to wallow in self-defeat. Psalms 43.2 Why go I mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? Psalms 42.5 Why art thou cast down, O my soul? And why art thou disquieted in me? Hope thou in God, for I shall praise him for the help of his countenance. Problems are like weeds in a garden, and it seems that they sprout higher and multiply. I could go outside and look at the whole garden, or I could go outside and focus on the weeds individually. You may ask, what is the difference? There are weeds in the garden either way. But is it better to focus on all the weeds at once, or to tend to the weeds one at a time? Nehemiah 4.19 The work is great and large, and we are separated upon the wall, one far from another. Have you ever heard the saying, you can't build Rome in one day? Well, when you try so hard to, it collapses. Why does it collapse? because you tried to build Rome and you burdened yourself with the construction. Rather than focusing on the whole city, why not just start with the foundation of a house? In the book of Judges, chapter 7, we have a problem. The Lord tells Gideon that the number of people is too many to fight the Midianites. Sounds strange, right? Judges 7, 3 Whosoever is fearful and afraid, let him return and depart early from Mount Gilead. So now we are down to 10,000 people. In verse 4, the Lord says there are still too many, so the Lord tells Gideon that he will test them. Judges 7:7, 7, 7, And the Lord said unto Gideon, By the 300 that lappeth will I save you, and deliver the Midianites into thine hand. The Lord wants soldiers that will not grieve heavily because of the trials, but will look them in the eye. God wants us to face our trials. He doesn't want us to be consumed by the trials, but to be spiritually stronger and learn from these trials. Trials can be like weeds that choke plants of growth, or they can be opportunities to bloom. The Lord wants you to be confident when you face your trials. You have to take the risk to reap rewards. In the book of Numbers, chapter 33, the children of Israel are supposed to drive the inhabitants of Canaan out. Numbers 33:53, And ye shall dis dispossess the inhabitants of the land and dwell therein, for I have given you the land to possess it. So God tells Moses that he has given the children of Israel the land. It is already there, theirs for the taking. In Numbers 33:55, God warns the Israelites what would happen if they did not obey him. As loving parents, he gives them a glimpse of the consequences that lay ahead if they don't drive out the Canaanites. Numbers 33:55, But if ye will not drive out the inhabitants of the land from before you, then it shall come to pass that those which ye let remain of them shall be pricks in your eyes and thorns in your sides, and shall vex you in the land. So why is it so hard when God tells you that something is already yours for the taking, but you get, but you choose not to take it? Is it because you're scared? Is it because you're full of doubt? Do you lack the faith, perhaps? Do you let the whole situation overwhelm you, and you think too hard on it, perhaps? Sometimes a person can over-rationalize point, a point of something until death to the point that it makes them sick with worry. 
That's not what God wants for us. God just wants us to listen so he can gently lead us through. God wants us to follow direction and to have trust in him. When you don't have trust in God, it's very hard to worship him. And it's really hard when you don't even trust yourself through him and his ability to lead you because you're scared of perhaps the things you did before you had God in your life. But you got to break free from that. you got to take a chance because God isn't going to lead you into misfortune. It may seem like it for a season, but God has something better planned for all of us. You just have to reach out, take his hand, and trust him. And when your heart is heavy laden and cast with burdens that seem too great for you, you just kind of got to take the ball and pass it to God so that you won't have to hold on to that ball anymore and worry about it. I kind of picture it like one of them inflatable beach balls that you get from Walmart. And when I meditate on it, there I am standing with that beach ball. And here I am tossing it over to God and he catches it. And then I'm free from that worry. I just let it go. And that's what we all need to do. In Deuteronomy 1.8, God even tells him, tells them, Behold, I have set the land before you. Go in and possess the land which the Lord swear unto your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, to give unto them and their seed after them. See, God wants the best for you. He's not trying to force you into a scary situation. But he's trying to see how you can follow his example and how if you will just do what he says, that he can give you the blessings that he wants you to have. He's not trying to plan your defeat, but he's trying to help lead you to victory. All it takes is faith and belief and hope in the words of our Lord. He loves you very much. To him you are priceless. You can't put a value on yourself because God has such an enormous love for you that he wants you to have the best. Just like a caring father. And sometimes in this life it's very hard to see God as a caring father. Especially when you grew up with an absent father biological father that you never knew or only visited a couple times or if you had a stepdad that abused you for 15 years it's very hard to take an earthly father and compare them to a heavenly father when in your life maybe you didn't know love just as I didn't know love love wasn't reciprocated to me wasn't given to me so I struggle with this situation now and again and that's why I make these videos, not just to teach you, but also to teach me. To help me open my heart more each and every day. And see the love of God that he has for me, inside of me, through me. Dear Heavenly Pr Father, I pray today that everyone who listens to this video will greatly benefit from these words of encouragement that you give to all of us. Let's not focus on the whole big problem. But let us take small baby steps and look at the problem just a piece at a time. If we work on one piece of a time at a time of that problem, rather than looking at the whole big picture and scaring ourselves, it goes so much easier. If you have lots of laundry to do, let's say, don't look at the huge mounting pile of laundry and tell yourself, I can't do it, it's too much. But rather, maybe sort the laundry into certain categories, like whites with whites, colors with colors, and then do each individual small load until the task gets complete. That's how God wants us to work. He doesn't want us to be scared of the laundry pile and say, I'm defeated already. But He wants us to sort through it and press on so that we can have the best that he wants us to have. So please, Father, 
allow everyone, including myself, to see these benefits of what you have to teach us, these benefits of the trials that you put us through for our learning and our joy. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.